Live from New Delhi, you're watching DD India Live, India's voice to the world. I'm Ramesh Ramachandran, coming up in the next 30 minutes. Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates interacts with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, discusses artificial intelligence, women-led development and innovation in agriculture. The Prime Minister gifts him a vocal for local gift hamper. Russia vetoes renewal of a UN panel of experts monitoring North Korea's compliance with international sanctions. The International Court of Justice says Israel must act on Gaza famine. Tel Aviv refutes allegations of blocking aid to the besieged enclave. And the world observes Good Friday, marking the beginning of the Easter weekend and culmination of the Holy Week. All right, first up, Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates had a candid interaction with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi. Both had a freewheeling chat on a range of issues such as artificial intelligence, digital public infrastructure and climate change. They also discussed the health, agriculture and education sectors in India. Gates presented books on nutrition to Prime Minister Modi. The Prime Minister, in turn, gifted him a vocal for local gift hamper. Prime Minister Modi told Gates about his concerns about tech misuse and deep fake. He said there should be a clear watermark on AI-generated content. AI ne jo challenges khadi ki hai, wo maine dekha hai ki itni achhi chiz. अगर प्रॉपरली ट्रेन किया बिना किसी के हाथ में दे दी जाए तो वो मिसयूज होने की संभावना ज्यादा है अब मैंने एआई से जुड़े सारे ब्रेन से उनसे भी बात की मैंने कहा शुरू में हमने कोई भी एआई जनरेटेड चीज है उस पर आना चाहिए वाटर मार्क ये एआई जनरेटेड है ताकि कोई मिसगाइड ना हो और ये बुरी चीज नहीं है सिंपली इट्स ए आई जनरेटेड तो मैं उसका वैल्यू समझ लूंगा डीप फेक भारत जैसे डेमोक्रेटिक कंट्रीज में और इतनी विशाल कंट्री में कोई एक डीप फेक में कुछ भी चीज डाल दे जैसे मेरे ही वॉइस में कुछ ऐसी गंदी चीज डाल दे तो शुरू में तो लोग मान जाएंगे तो बहुत बड़ी आग लग जाएगी तो ये जरूरी है कि डीप फेक ए आई जनरेटेड और ये सोर्स है ये आज शुरू के दिनों में आगे चल करके क्या होगा जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी शायद लेकिन ये हमने कुछ डूज एंड डॉन्ट्स उस पर सीरियसली सोचना पड़ेगा एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी स्पोक अबाउट द नीड फॉर क्वालिटी एंड क्लैरिटी ऑफ डेटा मैं इसको दो दर एक हमें कॉमन मैन को भी क्वालिटी डेटा के लिए ट्रेन करना पड़ेगा हमारे डेटा में क्वालिटी होनी चाहिए क्लैरिटी होनी चाहिए दूसरा डेटा ओनर को मालूम होना चाहिए कि जो मेरे से डेटा मांग रहा है वो किस काम के लिए मांग रहा है अगर वो उसके साथ एग्रीमेंट करके उसमें से कमाई करना चाहता है तो उसको अलाउ करना चाहिए कि और पहला उसको प्रायोरिटी रिसर्च के लिए होनी चाहिए रिसर्च के डेटा की वैल्यू ज़्यादा ना हो ताकि वरना रिसर्च बहुत महंगा हो जाएगा और रिसर्च करने वाले इंस्टीट्यूट ने भी उसको एश्योरेंस देना चाहिए कि तेरे डेटा का मैं जो उपयोग कर रहा हूं वो इसी काम के लिए होगा ये ग्लोबल गुड के लिए है कॉमन मैन गुड के लिए तो मैं मानता हूं दुनिया में कोई भी व्यक्ति इनकार नहीं करेगा प्राइम मिनिस्टर अर्ज द वर्ल्ड टू डिवेलप द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ग्रीन जी डी पी सेट द नेशन शुड इंक्लूडेड इन द ओवरऑल जी डी पी दुनिया को ग्रीन जीडीपी के कंसेप्ट को डेवलप करना चाहिए कि भाई तुम्हारे टोटल जीडीपी में ग्रीन जीडीपी कितनी है टोटल रोजगार में ग्रीन रोजगार कितने हैं 
हम एक नया आखिर टर्मिनोलॉजी बदलनी चाहिए दुनिया की तो मैं समझता हूँ कि समस्या का समाधान हो सकता है लेकिन अगर मैं कहूँगा मैं तो जितना उपयोग करता हूँ करूँगा मैं तो इतनी बिजली उपयोग करूँगा मैं इतना पानी बर्बाद करूँगा मैं ये करूँगा All right moving on India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has spent a tribute to the president of Ramakrishna Mission Swami Smarananda who died on Tuesday at the age of 95 due to old age ailments Prime Minister Modi wrote and I quote Shrimad Swami Smarananda ji Maharaj was a pioneer of India's spiritual consciousness and his demise is like a personal loss my heart like that of crores of devotees saints and followers of the ramakrishna mat and mission is deeply saddened at different points in india's development journey our motherland has been blessed by many saints and seers like swami atmastanand ji and swami smarananand ji who have ignited the spark of societal change they have motivated us to work with a collective spirit and address all the challenges our society faces these principles are eternal and will act as our source of strength as we embark on developing a viksit bharat during the amrit kal unquote india's minister of external affairs subramaniam jayashankar held talks with his ukrainian counterpart dmitro kuleba in new delhi on friday their discussions focused on the ongoing ukraine russia conflict and its wider ramifications they also exchanged views on global and regional issues minister jayashankar reiterated india's commitment to strengthen the overall relationship including bilateral cooperation i'm very glad that uh, despite our some of our bilateral mechanisms have also met i think this has created a certain momentum in our bilateral relationship uh, and uh, today uh, after this discussion in the afternoon we look forward uh, also to the meeting of the intergovernmental commission india and ukraine have been traditional friends but i think there is much more that we can do and should do not only in the interest of our nations but also in the interest of global uh, development and security architecture uh, we will be looking forward to restoring what had existed before the large scale invasion of russia and ukraine began existed between us we will be looking forward to discussing new areas and projects of our cooperation because i do believe that this relationship has uh, a strategic perspective and therefore uh, our leaders instructors spoke uh, prime minister modi and president zelensky they spoke uh, in person and on the phone a number of times and they always instruct us foreign ministers to push this relationship forward <coughs> so we have a big work to do and uh, i'm uh, I'm looking forward to delivering so that we can report to our leaders but also to the peoples of India and Ukraine two big friendly nation. All right, let's now get you the latest on what's happening in India in the run up to the world's largest democratic election. Prime Minister Modi interacted with BJP workers in Tamil Nadu via the Namo app on Friday. The interaction aimed to boost the morale of the BJP workers ahead of the general election. In his interaction the Prime Minister said that BJP is working on a model of women led development. The party is committed to making India the third largest economy in the world. He said women will play a crucial role in a developed India. He also said that he was happy that the women workers of the party are working hard. The chief of the Vanchit Bahujan Agadi Prakash Ambedkar has given a call to go solo in the election. But an MVA leader Sanjay Rauf said that he is trying to his best to convince Ambedkar so that the MVA could fight the election together. Meanwhile, amid a looming deadlock over seat sharing, 
Leaders from Maharashtra's Mahavikas Aghari are set to hold a press conference on 3rd April. Sharad Pawar, Uddhav Thakre, Nana Patole and Bala Saab Thorat will attend this press conference where information regarding seats will be shared with media persons. And my colleague Shishir Sheller joins us from Mumbai. Shishir, what's the status of the Mahavikas Aghari and Indi Alliance seat sharing formula in Maharashtra? Well, absolutely, Ramesh, as we've seen that we're nearing to the you know, election dates here. What we are seeing that uh, in Maharashtra, probably they, we may see another emergence of alliance here. Earlier, it was the ND alliance, which includes BJP, NCP and Shiv Sena. We also seen the Mahavikas Agadi, which has the Uddhav Thakre Shiv Sena faction. We also seen uh, Sharachandra Pawar Party's NCP's faction and uh, Congress along with it. But now probably uh, in a couple of days, we may see another alliance will emerge in Maharashtra led by uh, Vanchit Bhujan Agadi Chief uh, Prakash Ambedkar because in today's press conference he stated uh, that he is in talk with the other party leaders also and the organization who can support him uh, no, uh, in the election. Probably they may forge uh, one more alliance in Maharashtra and probably that may uh, change the equation uh, for the NDA and the MV alliance in Maharashtra. Well, obviously, he is in talk with the other leaders also in Maharashtra and try to understand that how can he garner support in different sections. And that's the reason uh, yesterday we have seen that the, uh, the Vanchit Bahujan Agadi has announced only eight candidate list here in Maharashtra. Probably uh, it gives uh, some of the hint that uh, you know, going forward uh, we may see some of the other leaders and the party may join hand with the Vanchit Bahujan Agadi. Well, Vanchit Bahujan Agadi earlier tried to be a part of the Mahavikas Agadi which has uh, the Uddhav Thakre uh, Shiv Sena party, uh, Sharad Chandra Pravar party and the Congress. Uh, but it seems that, that uh, no, uh, the, especially the talks between both these uh, parties are not going in right terms and that's the reason he also alleged that some of the people, especially uh, in Mahavikas Agadi, uh, no, uh, is giving false information and probably are not giving uh, exact uh, no, uh, the numbers they are asking for and that's the reason Mahuj uh, Vanchit Bahujan Agadi may part his way. So that is one of the important uh, no, but, but, uh, decision that uh, Prakash Ambedkar has taken in today's press conference. Well, going forward, if you see the overall picture in Maharashtra, all the parties are trying to convince their leaders. The senior leaders are actually talking to the other leaders also and probably mm -hmm. are trying to convince them uh, that you know, uh, even if they don't get tickets here, probably they should be with the party right. and don't turn rebel. And that's the reason uh, lots of meeting going on in all the camps uh, here, be it NDA Alliance or the Mahavikas Agari Alliance. Uh, since morning, we have seen that a lot of leaders are meeting. Uh, Chief Minister Eknath Shinde also, Deputy Chief Minister uh, Devendra Fadanvis and Ajit Pawar. And on the other hand, we are also seeing that leaders are meeting Sharad Pawar and Uddhav Thakri in order to get uh, the ticket for the Lok Sabha uh, election here. And probably this meeting will continue. Right. And probably that's the reason, uh, Ramesh, we can say that uh, the delay in announcing the candidature uh, for the upcoming Lok Sabha election. Shishir, thank you. Shishir Shela reporting there from Mumbai. Now, another joint coordination meet of the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Janata Dal secular leaders took place at Bengaluru. This in a bit to ensure that there is proper understanding between leaders and workers of both parties in the run-up to the election. This is the second joint meeting between the two coalition partners after the alliance was formed. As part of an alliance seat-sharing formula, the JDS will fight on three seats and the BJP on 25 Mandya is a seat in southern Karnataka which has become a focus of attention. It's going to be a tough fight as H.T. Kumaraswamy is contesting from Mandya while the Congress has fielded Star Chandru. After the BJP JDS Coordination Committee meeting, a JDS President and former Prime Minister H.T. Devegaura said that the two parties will strive to win all 28 seats in the state. First time BJP and JDS coordination committee meeting was held. All leaders were present. We have given a, one of the best messages to the people of Karnataka to fight the Congress and see that the Congress should be defeated and all the 28 candidates should be won in this election. 
The BJP candidate from Mandi Lok Sabha constituency in India's Himachal Pradesh, Kangana Ranaut, held a roadshow on Friday in the constituency. Actor turned politician Ranaut, who is contesting her first election, was seen greeting her supporters. She told them that she'll work for the development of the state. आप देख सकते हैं कि क्या आप देख सकते हैं कि क्या भीड़ उमड़ी है कितने लोग आए हैं और कितने लोग जो हैं वो गर्वित हैं कि मंडी की बेटी और मंडी की जो राष्ट्रवादी आवाज है वो अब इस इलेक्शन में जो है वो मंडी को रिप्रेजेंट करेगी हमारी बीजेपी की जो लीडरशिप है नरेंद्र मोदी जी जो हमारे जो लीडर हैं वो हमें जिस तरह से गाइड करेंगे उस डायरेक्शन में हम कोई कमी नहीं छोड़ेंगे Indian National Congress leader Ajay Markan addressed a press conference in New Delhi. He accused the BJP of a serious violation of tax laws. He said that there were no records of the donations made in the years 2017 and 2018. 2017-18 के अंदर BJP ने 1,297 लोगों के डोनेशन जिन्होंने दिए हैं उनका कोई एड्रेस उनका कोई पता नहीं दिया. सिर्फ नाम लिखा और छोड़ दिया. उसका कोई पता नहीं दिया पता इसके अंदर नाम और पता दोनों देना 42 करोड़ के लोग की राशि के बारे में कोई अता पता नहीं है कि वो आदमी जो है कहा रहता है क्या पाकिस्तान में रहता है क्या किस जगह पे हमारे देश में रहता है उसका एड्रेस क्या है और ये क्लियर वायलेशन है विथ अ सी ऑफ चॉइसिस फॉर वोटर्स टू चूज फ्रॉम द एग्जिस्ट एन ऑप्शन फॉर देम टू एक्सप्रेस दे डिस एज वेल The next report tells you all about this unique feature the choice of nota that is none of the above India is the largest democracy in the world and in the true sense of democracy voter is the king with India being a multi party system the choices before a voter range from the representatives of various political parties and independents But if none appeals, he or she can register that choice too. The option of none of the above or nota. In India, if a voter does not support any of the candidates contesting in a particular election, he or she has the option to select nota or none of the above as a measure of registering their disapproval of all the contestants. Nota was used for the first time in the 2013 assembly elections in 5 Indian states Chhattisgarh Mizoram Rajasthan Delhi and Madhya Pradesh and later in the 2014 general elections The Supreme Court of India reasoned that the nota option would allow voters to express their discontent with the political parties and the candidates they put up and thus help cleanse the political system but it's a method by which the voter can register his or her disapproval only the option has no real electoral value even if the maximum number of votes cast is for nota the candidate getting the most of the remaining votes would be declared the winner around the world as well countries like colombia ukraine brazil bangladesh finland spain sweden chile france belgium and greece allow their voters to cast nota votes the united states also allows it in a few cases and the state of texas in the us permits the provision since 1975 the nota option may not hold much electoral value however it represents a section of electorate dissatisfied enough to prefer no candidate over the ones contesting despite its capacity to alter election results nota's overall vote share has seen a decline from 1.41% in the 2018 polls to 0.97% in the recent elections the drop indicates a shift towards more decisive voting or voter education about nota's implications antra sinha for dd india and still to come on dd india live us government to give 60 million dollars for rebuilding the collapsed bridge in baltimore city Authorities call off efforts to recover the bodies of four missing men. More than 1500 people killed in Haiti as gang violence continues. And in tennis, India's Rohan Bopanna and his Australian teammate Matthew Ebden 
storm into the men's doubles final of the Miami Open. Why is ISIS surging again and uh, what are its implications, what are the threats that it poses to uh, international security and to India? ISIS has been a very decentralized organization since the beginning and that is what has given them benefit and has led them in this successful manner. What we, India has done up till now is to, uh, you know, uh, strike on the causes. So mm. de-radicalization has been our prime focus to deal with the ISIS Rather issues. than a purely military response. Yeah. You're watching DD India Live. I'm Ramesh Ramachandran. The International Court of Justice has ordered Israel to provide immediate, unhindered delivery of aid to Gaza. The judges unanimously said that it could be done by increasing the capacity and number of land crossing points and also maintaining them open for as long as necessary. In January, the ICJ, also known as the World Court, ordered Israel to refrain from any acts that could fall under the Genocide Convention. But Israel has dismissed the allegations that it is blocking aid to Gaza as wholly unfounded. Responding to the court order, the Israeli Foreign Ministry said that it was continuing to promote new initiatives and expand existing ones to allow a continuous flow of aid into Gaza by land, air and sea, working with the UN and other agencies. It said that the Hamas was to blame for the situation in Gaza and for starting this conflict. Russia has vetoed the renewal of a United Nations panel of experts monitoring North Korea's compliance with international sanctions. The Russian move follows accusations from the United States, South Korea and others that Pyongyang is supplying Moscow with weapons to use in its war in Ukraine. South Korea termed the Russian decision as irresponsible, while the U.S. State Department called it reckless and one that undermined international peace and security. On its part, Russia's UN envoy said that the sanctions on North Korea were unjustified without annual review and potential modifications. The said panel is formally called the Panel of Experts Assisting the Sanctions Committee, which was set up in the year 2006. If the resolution would have passed in the voting, the panel would have been renewed till 30th of April 2025. The Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov has said that Russia's veto is in line with Russia's interests. Such a position is more in line with our interests. The talk was about a group of experts. The issue is that we do not agree with the practical aspects of this project. An unfortunate collision in the U.S. state of Maryland wrecked a bridge in Baltimore City. Six workers were killed. The cargo ship was nearly as long as the Eiffel Tower in Paris. The crash was immense. An interesting take, though, is that the same ship was involved in the 2016 Antwerp crash. The U.S. government is now pouring millions into restoration of the bridge, but it says that there is a long road ahead. Rishabh Sharma has more. Or with the families. And to all the families, we are so sorry for this tragedy. On Tuesday, in the VRs, a cargo ship named Dali, heading towards Colombo in Sri Lanka, hit the Francis Scott Bridge in Baltimore Harbour in Maryland. The strike was powerful, causing most of the bridge to collapse. Six workers engaged on a roadside work on the bridge fell into the waters. All of them are presumed dead. Rescue crews initiated a rescue operation soon after the accident. They recovered two of the six bodies. One of them belonged to Maynor Suazo a migrant worker. His family is having a tough time. However, they still appeal US government to not stop till all the bodies are recovered. We understand that the US government is losing millions of dollars because the boats are not moving. But we believe that they should not forget the suffering of the families 
and the four victims whose bodies have not yet been found. Almost 31,000 cars used to cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge every day, and it was one of three ways to cross Baltimore Harbor. The cargo ship was the length of the Eiffel Tower. The collision was immense, hence authorities say it will take time to rebuild the bridge. The U.S. government has also awarded $60 million to the state of Maryland in the federal emergency relief. Government is working hand-in-hand in hand with industry to investigate the area, to clear the wreck, and to move the ship. Leaders from across local and state and federal levels are gathering funds to rebuild this bridge. This work is not going to take hours. This work is not going to take days. This work is not going to take weeks. We have a very long road ahead of us. Built in 1976, the Francis Scott Key Bridge missed out on structural engineering redundancies that are commonplace in newer bridges. Engineers also say that the size of cargo ships has grown in recent decades and now is an urgent need to better protect the piers holding up spans over the shipping channels to prevent further casualties. Rishabh Sharma's report for DD India. Now that cargo ship is owned by a Singapore-based company. The government of Singapore is now launching a dual investigation into the Baltimore bridge collapse. DD India's Patrick Falk reports. Right, apologies for that. We'll try to get that in just a bit. But moving on for now, in Haiti, more than 1,500 people have been killed so far this year as gang violence continues. The country has extended a state of emergency while trying to deal with the civil unrest and set up a new government. Did India's Latin America correspondent, Mary Trina Mena, has more details. Right, in other news, Good Friday is being observed across the globe today. The day commemorates the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his death at Calvary. Good Friday is an important day in the Christian calendar as it marks the beginning of the Easter weekend and the culmination of the Holy Week. It's a day of mourning and reflection for Christians as they remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and his suffering on the cross. On this day, Christians engage in sorrow, penance, fasting and attend church service. On Good Friday, tens of thousands of devotees climb the Malayatur Cross Hill, reenacting the memory of the Passion of Christ in India's southern state of Kerala. The believers climb the mountain carrying large crosses to commemorate the suffering of Lord Jesus. Passion play on the occasion of Good Friday was also organized in some churches where the faithful reenacted the passion and death of Jesus Christ. One such passion play is also seen in a church in North Paravur in Ernakulam in the state of Kerala. To sports news now, India's Rohan Bopanna and his Australian teammate Matthew Ebden have stormed into the men's doubles final of the Miami Open. The duo sealed an easy 6-1, 6-4 win over Spain's Marcel Granollers and his Argentine partner Horatio Zebalos. Bopanna and Ebden will take on Croatia's Ivan Dodic and his American partner Austin Kratzczek in the final on Saturday. Bopanna has slipped to second spot in the doubles rankings after a quarterfinal loss at the Dubai Championships and an early exit at the Indian Wells Masters. Following the Australian Open triumph, the 44-year-old Bopanna had climbed to the world number one spot in the ATP rankings, becoming the oldest player to do so. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of DD India Live. Let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. You can connect with us on Facebook, X and Instagram. You can also check out our website ddindia.co.in. We'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I am Ramesh Ramachandran. From all of us here in New Delhi, thanks for watching DD India Live.